Our countdown to kickoff coverage is continuing and we're heading out to Kansas City with Michael Coleman of KCTV5. I want to start with the quarterback play. Firstly, the Chiefs overall went 7-9 last season and they dealt with a ton of injuries. One of them was to mm -hmm. their quarterback, Matt Castle. Now, mm -hmm. he took them to the playoffs, I believe it was in 2010, winning the AFC West. This will be his fourth full season as a starter. So now give me your take exactly on Matt Castle. Does it, you told me last year that the team has a ton of trust in this guy, but as a reporter for this team that sees them every day, do you have trust in him? Well, that's a very good question. They have a new offensive coordinator. Now I saw him perform uh, in a preseason game. They had, a, of course, they, they, they took care of Arizona. They did the first two series, bit, bit, bit. The offense was efficient. They found the rhythm right away. And they did two series and came out, and everyone was like, okay, this is a whole lot better than what we saw all of last preseason. And then they proceeded to lose the next three games. <laughs> and, um, and, again, we know that's not, not about wins and losses in the preseason, but you got to change the culture. And they wanted to, beat, they wanted to beat Seattle two weeks ago. And when Seattle and Russell Wilson hung 44 points on them, uh, that, that was just a reminder of last year. So, you know, roundabout way, to your point, I don't trust him. He's got, all, he's got a lot of weapons. His weapons are back. They've brought some new weapons in. Peyton Hillis being the big running back they brought in. Mm -hmm. Jamal Charles, he's back from his injury. He's good as gold to go to, to play. And Jake O'Connell and uh, Boss, Kevin Boss, the tight end. So he's got weapons. He does a good job of managing the game. He's not the kind of quarterback, and I've seen him two years now plus, he's not the kind of quarterback that's going to win games for you. He's not going to buy time because he's been beat up so much. You know, I think that paranoia kicks in. So I don't trust him in, in duress situations, but I think once he finds his rhythm, against Green Bay last week, they, all they did was run the ball. That's all they did was run the ball. And once he completed his first pass, they took him out. Hmm. And so I kind of get a sense that's how they're going to play him. But, but I think when it comes to having your back against the wall, he's not the guy at that position. Let me ask you this, though. <laughs> Eric yeah. Berry, torn ACL. Mm -hmm. 23 mm -hmm. years old. Jamal Charles, yep. torn ACL, 25 years old. Tony mm -hmm. Moyaki, who I really liked prior to his injury, torn ACL, 25 years old. Also another Chicago kid from Warren, Illinois. Right. Uh, these three guys are so, so big for their offense. Now, you could argue that a lot of the load has been taken off uh, Jamal Charles because they signed Peyton Hillis and right. Tony Moyaki because they signed Kevin Voss. Let me start with the tight ends with you. What kind of a role would you say that Tony Moyaki will play? Will they have the two wide receiver, two tight end set, utilizing well, both Boss and Moyaki? What do you see? Might be Boss and then O'Connell. I think uh -huh. it's O'Connell or O'Connell. Because um, Moyaki didn't really have a great, and then maybe, they're, and I, I will let me back up. I know with those three ACL guys, they did kind of hold them back a little bit. Like when uh, Jamal Charles, I think, in one of the, the, the scrimmages, they didn't want him playing on the grass or the surface. They didn't want to take a chance yet, that part. Um, I think Moraki, last year he made some tr tremendous catches, you know, or two years ago when he was a rookie. Yep. Um, I, I think when you come back from a knee injury, subconsciously you say you're ready, but not until you get that first lick, you know, that first good lick, that first plant that you have to make to make that catch or make that move or to make that block where your knee's not getting twisted or just staying out of the way. For instance, Eric Berry in one particular game took a pretty hard hit uh, below his waist but he hopped back up. And that's the look of a, of a guy that just had an issue with his knee, and he wanted to serve by that he was fine. But he made a point of saying, i got to remember to stay out of piles. And I think that's the, thing with, I think that's the deal with, with Moriaki as well. Um, he, he is being pushed because Boss is a tremendous veteran. I can't believe the Giants let him go when they did. You know, so he definitely brings something here because he will catch. And I think O'Connell, I think he's, he'll be, he's a stronger uh, blocker. Jamal Charles. Now, again, he's coming back from a torn ACL. A lot of people were taking him uh, possibly in the second round of many fantasy football drafts. But one of his quotes just shows me a lot about this team. Here's what he said about the signing of Peyton Hillis. We're just trying to make each other better. We're, we've been doing that this whole training camp, making each other better. At the end of the day, it's about winning. It's not about who gets the most yards. It's just about winning. Is this because of the coaching change with Romeo Cornell? Is it because he realizes that the load has to be taken off of him in order to not have uh, and, and be worked for 30 carries a game? I mean, what is it? 
Well, I think part of that is about, I don't think it has anything to do with Todd Haley. I think when you're a running back, especially in the day's league, you know it's going to be running back by committee. You know, uh, the teams, I mean, other than Adrian Peterson, you know, there aren't many of him in this league, obviously, and he's going to get the full load. I think what, I think what Jamal understands is, okay, yeah, we're much more effective if we have somebody to pick up the load. Now, he had Thomas Jones here, but Thomas Jones, you know, he's on the downside of his career, you know, a season ago. And, yep. and I think Thomas was more here to be the veteran, to guys under the, under his wing and whatnot. But I think Jamal realizes, hey, you know what, if Peyton Hillis takes 10 carries away from me and we're being productive and we're winning and we're having success, who am I to argue? And I think he understands that. And I think the thing about Romeo, you know, he's your grandfather, you know, Sometimes I think he needs to be a bit more stricter, and we'll see how that plays out down the road. But I think he has emphasized to these guys, we can't win if we're not on the same page, and we can't win if we don't have the same attitude, and we want to do it the right the same way all the time. So I think what Jamal understands is I carry 10, 12 carries less for the season, or more, maybe more, whatever. If we're winning, that's fine. But don't get me wrong, if they give him the ball 12 times in a row, he's not going to hesitate or object to getting it either. Mm -hmm. He also played in the ACC with Pitt, so you can't say that it was LSU corners, <laughs> Alabama corners that were going after him, all right? They still got close. And, and, and what is Pitt doing in the ACC, man? <laughs> you would know better than I would. <laughs> That's a question that we need to ponder on for a while. <laughs> all right, bring in the Pittsburgh guy. Let's get him on the line. My last question <laughs> for you, Michael. The over-under is set on the Kansas City Chiefs this year at eight wins. What do you say to that? That's about right. And you know it's funny. I had them going seven and nine last year, which is what they went. But it wasn't the seven and nine that I had predicted. And that's why it was so ironic that they finished the way they finished. And I had them, like I said, finishing seven and nine, but under a whole different set of circumstances. And that's what it wound up being. Because um, I didn't. I mean, Green, the Green Bay comes to Kansas City. Green Bay gets upset. So wow. And of course, Romeo was doing it at that time. He was the interim coach at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a tough. They got a tough, tough schedule. Their first six games, I mean, includes uh, obviously Atlanta, uh, Baltimore, uh, New Orleans Saints, um, Tampa, Florida. I mean, they've got a heck of a schedule. And I had said if they could be four and two, watch out. I don't know. I'm looking out the first three games. If they're one and two, all right, they might be okay. So I, I might have them go. I might have them go eight and eight. 